Hello everyone, this is 3DX and in today's video I will be creating a stylized uh, backpack here in Maya and Substance Painter. So what I'll be doing is first I'm going to be creating um, almost like a block out of the model and I was actually going for you know, the actual final model here at the beginning but uh, I found that you know, the results weren't looking um, the way I wanted them so I kind of redid the way I created the main shape of the backpack so I decided to instead of creating it from the box I just took the side of that initial block out and then kind of extruded out some of the pieces and this is a technique that you can use uh, for various different models uh, where you can create by using essentially panels uh, uh, to create the model so that's what I went for here I used some panels to create the model just because the edge flow in this case was working a lot better than the initial uh, model that I was creating up first and that's usually how it goes sometimes with models is that you start by making it and then you realize that it's not working so well so you kind of have to you know take a different approach and this was the case uh, for this model so at the beginning I started out with a cube and it wasn't really working so I just took the side of it and started to extrude out of that just to create the model. And I think uh, this worked a lot better than the initial uh, process just because in the initial cube um, I didn't necessarily have the right uh, edge flow. Topology wasn't really flowing the way I wanted it and so it was a good call in this case to kind of change that which like I said you're going to have to do in some occasions when you're making a model you're going to find out that the um, process that you're following is not necessarily working so you're just, you're just going to have to experiment a little bit uh, but okay so in this video I'm going to be creating the model mostly in Maya both the uh, low poly and the high poly model I'm not going to be taking this to ZBrush uh, mainly because I wasn't looking to add um, you know a lot of extra detail to it now you could take it to zebra to add maybe like folds or something like that to the to the surface of it uh, but in this case I wanted to keep it relatively simple which is why I decided to just create the model in Maya first and then in ZBrush I mean and then in Substance Painter and as you can see here I'm mostly creating a lot of the pieces separately now you can always uh, weld things later if you really have to you know, lower uh, your poly count or if you want to make it water tight uh, for like a game or something like that. But I think initially when you create the model at first it's perfectly fine to um, just keep things separate just because it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to create everything out of one uh, piece of geometry. You can always separate things and welding things back together is not so difficult that you can't do it later so that's usually my recommendation is to create the model in separate pieces and then just if you have to weld things later i also think it makes it a lot easier to bake uh, when you have pieces separately because that way you're not getting you know edge bleeding or things like that when you're baking uh, your normal maps and all of that so that's why I'm going here with the uh, keeping pieces mostly separate. And obviously I'm working mostly in sub D mode here, uh, mainly because I will be subdividing the model uh, to get my low poly. And then I was also I'm going to optimize it a little bit by uh, reducing the uh, some of the unnecessary edges and all of that as well. Uh, I think I also had to speed up this one a little bit more than the uh, typical. Um, I think this one took about two and a half hours, I think, to create. So I had to speed it up a little bit more. Most models I make usually take uh, somewhere between an hour to maybe two hours. Uh, usually less than that. So in this case, I did have to speed it up a little bit more than usual.
And then I'm also going to be reusing a lot of the pieces uh, so that I save uh, in UV uh, resolution, texture resolution. So I'm going to be reusing a lot of the pieces, especially uh, the back here. I'm just setting them up right now just so that I can see what they're going to look like. But I will be reusing some of these. And as always, if you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them in the uh, comment section. Usually try to answer most questions, uh, especially uh, when I upload the video, I'm usually around just double checking if anyone has questions and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, if you have questions, make sure you leave those in the comment section. So at this point here, I started to get the low poly model. And uh, so I did a smooth and then I cleaned that up a little bit just by reducing some of the uh, unnecessary geometry. Don't want to have geometry that's not adding to the shape. Um, especially for game models, you want to make sure you don't have unnecessary ge geometry. For film models, uh, you can be more, it's more lenient. You can keep uh, high poly models for the most part. But for games, I recommend reducing a low poly, I mean the poly count on it, and just getting rid of any unnecessary geo. Now for UVs, I'm going to be uh, mostly doing UVs on half the model so that I can mirror the UVs to the other side. Mostly because, like I said, it's, uh, this is a mostly simple model with uh, mostly just colors that, uh, that define the texture for the most part. There's not a lot of detail that's going to be going on this. Now, if you do plan to add um, more sculpted detail, you may want to uh, not mirror, or at least not the main shape of the backpack. But I will be doing that for the most part here because I want to save uh, UV space. I want to keep it relatively simple and not have like a million pieces. That's the thing about UVs, you want to make sure you don't have too many pieces. I did end up packing it manually here a little bit just so that I could pack it slightly better than the uh, default layout tool. And then I'm just going to do a mirror and just kind of do that with all the pieces that I cut in half. Now at this point I did cut uh, some sections of the video so now we're in Substance Painter. Uh, like I said this one was a little bit longer than usual so I had to cut a few pieces just to keep this video somewhat short. Um, but I did mirror UVs and I exported the high poly and the low poly. And here in Substance Painter what I'll be doing is mostly applying the colors. And I'm also using the uh, 3DX stylized style material. There's a link in the description if you want to learn how to make it. And obviously I am adding uh, some layers here and changing the colors so that I can get something similar to the concept. And like I said, I'm keeping this relatively simple. It's mostly just color changes. And there's a little bit of, uh, I guess, ambient occlusion on some of the edges. But other than that, it's uh, relatively simple. And any details I'm just adding with Substance Painter. And I'm gonna use the, uh, one of the stitch tools, uh, brushes here in Substance, just to add that extra stitching around uh, some of these. You know, you don't necessarily have to use ZBrush to add the, uh, the details like that. You can just use Substance Painter. Especially since you can, uh, if you have straight UVs, you can just do it there. So it makes it a lot easier. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Here is the render in Marmoset Toolback. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, I recommend you subscribe. And also check the links in the video description. There's a bunch of links there that are useful. And I'll hopefully see you in a future video. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. 
So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine. So you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.